the day we're taking a look at these NBA matches, which are happening on Friday, May 12, 2023, and giving you our team and total picks for today. Welcome back to High Stakes. Before we dive into our video, don't forget to subscribe and to push the notification bell so you don't miss any of our videos. Also check out our Patreon if you want access to our premium picks. Our Patreon is a way for us to help you improve your chances of making more money, and if you are interested in props and parlay picks, check out our new channel High Stakes Props and Parlays, where you can find our player props and parlay picks predictions. You will find the link to our Patreon and to our new channel in the description and comments section below. New York Knicks vs Miami Heat New York wasn't bad on the road during the regular season, but in the postseason, they've been far more inconsistent. A pair of losses in Miami in games 3 and 4 by a combined 27 points has fans wondering if they can find success on Friday night, even as their momentum trends back in a positive direction. Game 5 saw New York lead from the start, and even despite a fast and furious finish by Miami, they were able to hang on and keep their season for at least one more night. Rebounding was key for them on Wednesday night, and they'll need to lean on a few strengths. The lack of depth continues to be a major concern, but with plenty of talent throughout the starting five, New York certainly has the team that can make things interesting in this crucial game. The Knicks came into Game 5 down 3-1 and in danger of losing the series. They were able to bounce back in a win, led by Jalen Brunson and his 38 points, 9 rebounds and 7 assists. The Knicks trailed by 10 after the first quarter, but dominated the second and third quarters on their way to victory. First-year Nick Jalen Brunson was excellent for New York, he had 38 points, 9 rebounds and 7 assists in the win. The Knicks continue to battle injuries, which doesn't do anything except exploit their depth issues even more. All eyes remain on the status of Emmanuel Quickly, Ankle, who missed the last game and is questionable for this one. They have another four or five players already ruled out, though only Quickly's absence figures to pose a problem. New York continues to lean heavily on the defense, especially given Miami's struggles at times on the offensive end. They have one of the best field goal efficiency defenses in the league, while their ability to defend well in the front court certainly helped their last game. Jalen Brunson, 26.5 ppg, 5.9 app, continues to look like one of the best point guards left in the playoffs, though they need Julius Randle, 16.8 ppg, to step up his play. RJ Barrett is turned into the second scorer on this roster, but if the Knicks want to match their regular season success, it'll start with Randle finding a way to make more of an impact. Ranked right in the middle of the league in most offensive categories this season, they'll have their hands full on the road on Friday night. Miami is undefeated at home in the postseason, and the combination of coach Eric Spolstra and playoff Jimmy Butler has been a force this postseason. New York did everything they could to win Game 5 at home, but will not have enough to win on the road. Julius Randle is only averaging 16.8 ppg this postseason, after averaging 25.1 in the regular season. Jimmy Butler plays better in the postseason than he does in the regular season, and Julius Randle is the exact opposite, and he is struggling in the postseason. Miami has the ultimate trump card that can be played when needed, which is sticking Jimmy Butler on Jalen Brunson to shut him down. Expect the Heat to do whatever they need to win Game 6 at home. Take Miami to win and cover. As the lower seed, Miami will want to close out the series at home in Game 6 and not travel to Madison Square Garden for Game 7. The Heat are the 8th seed, but have won every game at home this postseason and are doing it without a 20 ppg scorer from the regular season in Tyler Harrow. The Heat won each game at home against New York by at least 8 points. Jimmy Butler emphasized his focus on winning above personal accolades saying, it doesn't matter if I score 40 or 50 or 19 or 9, we always have enough to win, and if I score 10 points in that game and we win, that wouldn't be an issue, wouldn't be a question, and I will continue to play the right way. Miami did not have a player top 20 in the Game 5 loss, led by Jimmy Butler and his 19-point, 9 assist and 7 rebound performance. Bam Adebayo played well on the inside scoring 18 points and grabbing 8 rebounds. Max Strauss started the game and hit four threes on his way to a 14-point game. Duncan Robinson got hot from the outside as well, scoring 17 points after knocking down five threes off the bench. Cody Martin continues to provide strong minutes off the bench, the forward can do a little of everything, and added 11 points in his 28 minutes. Three out of five games in this series have gone over the total. The Heat have scored 103 or more in every game this series, but have played much better at home in the playoffs. Role players like Struss, Vincent, and Robinson are expected to shoot better at home behind their home crowd, and the Heat will have no problem scoring enough to send this over the total. Jalen Brunson has recharged this New York offense and will continue to push the tempo in the hopes of keeping this game close. Ultimately 208.5 is a low number, and these teams will go over in Game 6. Take the over 208.5 points.
Golden State Warriors vs Los Angeles Lakers. Golden State held serve on Wednesday night, beating the Lakers 121-106 at the Chase Center in San Francisco. The win extends the series as the Lakers now lead 3-2. Golden State shot 51% from the floor and dominated on the boards, outrebounding La 48-38. Steph Curry led the Warriors with 27 points and 8 assists, while Andrew Wiggins stepped up with 25 points and 7 rebounds. Wiggins actually got 18 shots, which is amazing considering how little he usually gets a chance to touch the ball. Draymond Green also had a nice game with a double-double, 20 points and 10 rebounds. Gary Payton added 13 points and 6 rebounds, while Klay Thompson had 10 points and 6 boards. The Lakers never really got going on Wednesday night at the Chase Center, as they fell to the Warriors 12-105 in Game 5 of their Best of 7 series. They hope to have better results Friday night at the arena formerly known as the Staples Center in Game 6. This game featured Anthony Davis exiting the game with about 7 minutes left with a head injury. Davis is listed as questionable for Game 6 Friday night, but the team is hopeful that he'll play. Obviously, everyone saw he took a shot to the head, but we just checked in on him, he seems to be doing really good already Lakers coach Darvinham said, reported ESPN. It is really hard to close out a series, and it is even harder when that team you are looking to close out is the defending champion, four-time world champion Golden State Warriors. But the Lakers have their own pedigree to fall back on, as they have four-time world champion Lebron James and Davis, who has also won a title. This won't be easy, but the Lakers know they have to finish the Warriors off Friday because if they don't, they have to head back to San Francisco for Game 7, and they don't want that. Take the Lakers here giving up the points. Our team pick is Lakers minus 3 points. The 121-106 win felt like it was a game that really shifted Golden State's way late in the second quarter, when a tight contest exploded to an 11-point halftime lead for the Warriors, after some late threes dropped. Golden State finished the second half plus four on the scoreboard in the win, as they now get one more crack at winning a road game in this series. One could argue that the Warriors addressed some of their season-long road issues after winning games five and seven in Sacramento, but they were also up against a young team that was essentially void of playoff experience. That's not something they can particularly lean on in this round, as it's actually been the Warriors the team with six finals appearances in the last eight years, who look like the inexperienced group the last time they were in LA, crumbling in the fourth quarter of Game 4, minus 10 points in the frame, of that 104-101 loss. The health of Anthony Davis is the Lakers' first concern coming out of Game 5, as they knew they were walking into a lion's den, and that it would take a special performance to get out of there with a win to close the series. Reports suggest Davis will be good to go for Law in Game 6, as does the point spread, and the Lakers will need him at his best if they want to avoid a return trip to Golden State for Game 7. LeBron James has first-hand experience about how hard it is to beat Golden State at home in a Game 7, but we've yet to play Game 6, and avoiding a Game 7 is Law's number one goal right now. The Lakers need Davis as close to 100% as possible because they make their bread and butter on defense, with him as the anchor in the middle. The goal is to still keep the Warriors at 112 or less, Lakers are 3-0 SU in this series when that happens, and after Golden State didn't even combine for 200 points in games 3 and 4 played in LA, you can expect the Lakers to look to slow things down and force the Warriors to execute against them in the half-court sets. Even with the all-time great shooters Golden State has available, LA still has to like their chances in the scenario this game is predominantly a half-court execution style contest. Any Lakers win is likely going to come on the backs of some overall great team defense from LA led by Anthony Davis of course, and we've already seen this total drop from its opener of 223. It's a move I've got to agree with here being on the Lakers side as well, as it's going to be their defense that leads the way in most cases of a Lakers win, and Golden State's inability to consistently have one or two others beside Curry knock down shots